Well, guys, the purpose of uh, this press conference today is to announce that there has been a plea in the Carson Ray Peters capital murder case, which was set to begin November the 29th with jury selection. Mr. Peters was charged by indictment with four counts of capital murder, all involving the deaths of Teresa Peters, Tammy Smith, and James Miller. There was an additional count uh, in the indictment for assault in the first degree involving the shooting of Mary Kenny, who fortunately survived her gunshot wounds. Mr. Peters entered pleas of guilt to all of these charges. As for the capital murder charges, Mr. Peters received a sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole. As for the plea to the charge of assault in the first degree, Mr. Peters received a sentence of 20 years. If you'll recall, the events that, the events that resulted in these charges occurred on May the 24th of 2020 at the addresses of 68 and 70 Flint Creek Drive in the Danville community, which is within the police jurisdiction of the Cato Police Department. Mr. Peters was indicted by the Morgan County jury during its August 2021 term. Last week, my team of investigators, uh, excuse me, uh, last week, my team uh, of prosecutors, my investigator, and myself, we all met with the uh, family representatives as well as Mary Kenny, the victim of the assault. And at that time, we discussed the possibility of entering plea negotiations with Mr. Peters and his attorneys with regards to life without the possibility of parole. I'm always interested in listening to uh, families where uh, they've had a loved one who's been the victim of a murder. And so that is just standard operating procedure uh, in my office. After those discussions, I told them that I did not want them to respond at that point. I wanted them to go home and think about it uh, over the weekend to be sure that whatever they decided was what they wanted to do. So on Tuesday of this week, I received word that uh, all of the family representatives of all the victims uh, in these cases had decided that they wanted us to enter the plea negotiations with regards to life without the possibility of parole. Now please understand, I do not ever place that burden on the family to tell me whether we should seek uh, the death penalty or whether we should seek life without the possibility of parole. That is not their burden to bear. That's my burden to bear as the DA and as their DA. However, I do place a, gra a great deal of weight on their opinions and their desires, and I always try to honor those desires if the facts of the case and my own personal sense of justice will allow me to do that. There were also other considerations in this case. One of them was the Danville community. Uh, I'm a member of that community. That's where I live. And so through the course of uh, a couple of years now, uh, when I had the opportunity, I would uh, take, take the chance to speak with members of the Danville community about this case. And every person that I talked to that personally knew Carson Peters talked about how this was so out of character for him that they were surprised uh, that, that he was charged and, and did something like this. That was one consideration. The other consideration was Mr. Peter's age. He's now 62 years old. If we had pursued the death penalty in this case and it had been ordered by the court uh, that uh, that was his sentence, the appeals process would have then begun. And as you all know, the appeals process in capital murder cases in the state of Alabama takes literally decades. And so I, just doing the math, I figured that uh, it was very likely that Mr. Peters would die in prison before any death penalty uh, was implemented uh, if it were ordered by the court. So based on that, uh, this sentence seemed very practical uh, to me and a very practical resolution. But at the end of the day, what I wanted was justice, uh, and I wanted closure for these families. <clears throat> I made this decision with the realization that there may be those who will criticize uh, the decision that I made to offer and allow him to accept life without the possibility of parole. 
but I'm a big boy, I can take that criticism. It won't be the first decision I've made that has uh, been criticized, and I'm sure it won't be the last. All right, you were just listening to a Morgan County District Attorney there, Scott Anderson, talking about the capital murder case of Carson Peters, accused of killing his soon-to-be ex-wife and two others, accepting a plea deal. So this will not go to trial now. Um, after the DA spoke with the victim's families, they agreed to life in prison without the possibility of parole. We'll have much more on this coming up later on 48 News at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Talking about from my standpoint or the family standpoint? <clears throat> well, I had always assumed that this would be a death penalty case. Um, but when I met with the family and I explained the appeals process and I saw uh, how badly they desired closure, uh, I, I put their feelings in front of mine and, and knew that, like I said, the the reality of him actually being executed if that sentence were imposed were slim, very slim. So that weighed heavy on me. I didn't want to have to put them through that process knowing that the likelihood of achieving that end result was not very high. So. When the prosecutor in the case, the uh, district attorney, tried to deal with Carson, what, was, what kind of reaction you have to tell me who him is. Uh, one of the uh, district attorneys or the uh, counsel there. What, was, what reaction did you get from him when that happened? Where was uh, we, we weren't able to talk to him. Uh, he has lawyers that represent him. But um, no, we, once the family informed my office that they wanted us to pursue life without possibility of parole, then I immediately picked up the phone and, and called them. Relayed that offer, which they then went to Mr. Peters. Now, what they talked about, I have, I have no idea. I don't know what his reaction would be, other than that he accepted. So that wasn't a face to face. No, sir. Yes, yeah. okay. In continued conversation with the Peters attorneys, was there a give and take between the guilty plea, or was this sort of an eleventh hour decision by them? No. There, once we made the offer, there was no give and take. Uh, it was take that offer, or we're ready to start trial. November 29th. What would you say the biggest accomplishment of this uh, process has been? Just providing closure for the family, or was there any step further that you would have liked to see? Well, no. I mean, it's closure for the family. Uh, that they they were my that was my main goal. Uh, once I sat down and analyzed his age and the likelihood of the death penalty being imposed was was not great. Even if we got the death penalty, then uh, you know getting closure for them so they can go home and start the healing process was more important. Any others? All right, thank you guys.